Hey everybody, it's Party Elite here with something extra special for you today as we dive into the South America Pack DLC in Planet Zoo. A massive thanks first off goes out to the developers for giving me early access to the DLC so I can actually showcase it on this channel and you can see all the animals, all the new construction pieces, how it all comes together and that's exactly what we're aiming to do today folks. Uh, the plan is to actually build enclosures for all of the animals and then bring those animals in and take a look at their behavior, see how they uh, treat the enclosures and see what the experience is like and also taking a peek at their uh, you know animations and stuff. And as those of you that follow the Let's Play on this channel will know, I am, yes, going to get distracted by their adorableness and some of the really cute animations and things that we, uh, that we have uh, being added. Uh, I can't help myself. Uh, just a quick note, there will be timestamps in the description down below, so if you want to jump around and look at the different animals, I'll try and keep it as organized as possible. Of course, when the game starts, there is a lot of dancing around with notifications and whatnot to try and catch, you know, babies and mating animations and things like that. Uh, but I will try to keep it as organized as possible, so timestamps in the description down below. So first things first, we are building the uh, enclosure for our uh, capuchin monkeys and the giant ant eaters they can actually spare uh, share space and they can also share space with the baird's tapir so if you want to you know make some modifications to your existing zoos and things like that you can my theme for this enclosure uh is <laughs> so i'm making a temple because of course we've got all the pieces to make temples but i'm making a ruined temple and i'm really happy with all the ruined pieces that we're getting it's almost like Planet Zoo uh, developers have been watching, uh, you know, us try to make ruined structures and stuff in, in, in different situations. And so now they're just giving us a bunch of pieces to do that with. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be building a ruined temple. And the temple is dedicated to uh, Tlaloc. Tlaloc? Tlaloc? Not exactly 100% sure how to uh, pronounce it. Uh, but the inspiration is actually a specific sculpture, which I believe is in Mexico. Uh, now, Tlaloc is a god of the Aztec religion, and uh, he's associated with um, caves, springs, mountains, uh, and rain. That's the big one. Um, rain, hail, thunder, lightning, all that kind of stuff. So he's a very interesting god. Uh, I'm, I'm only somewhat familiar, in all honesty, but I have seen this sculpture that I find uh, very interesting. And I wanted to test these construction pieces and see how far we could push them. So, you know, the baseline here is, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, really interesting and really beautiful. I love these ruined block pieces. I think they're really nicely made. It's nice to have these rubble piles and stuff as well. But if you've, again, seen the Let's Play on this channel, you'll know that I like to try and see if we can push the blocks to make more out of them. And, uh, and boy, can you. <laughs> I do it a couple times in, in today's session. Uh, but yeah, so again, this is the enclosure for our uh, monkeys as well as our ant eaters, right? So I have to try and keep both of their needs and wants in mind. Uh, so the ant eaters, I have some room for them to swim in. I'm going to have them drinking uh, water from you know the left side where you can see all the soil. Uh, that's where all the water is going to be. And meanwhile, I'm building these uh, elevated platforms in the hopes that the monkeys will be able to use them. Uh, now, more on their usage of these elevated platforms later, of course. And at the same time, you can see me kind of uh, playing around with some of the new pieces, some of those gold decorative elements and the grass bedding. Uh, so lots, lots of cool stuff. But over here, I start building this sculpture of ours. So I'll, uh, there's, not, there's not much to say over here. Uh, again, my knowledge of Tlaloc is relatively surface level, otherwise I would go on for hours uh, with everything I know. Uh, but I do find the architectural and artistic style very interesting. Um, and uh, I do find it interesting that it's actually possible to make some of these shapes. Um, and, and you'll see what I mean uh, as I go along. But uh, how about for now, uh, let's just enjoy some of the music. I'll go quiet for a bit, save my voice. It's been, uh, it's been a long uh, evening, night, and early morning of recording. Uh, so yeah, watch away as I as I kind of build this sculpture over here of uh, of Tlaloc.
All right, so putting it in place now, you can see we kind of built like a headdress kind of a situation. We've kind of got a mouth and a nose going in there. If you look at the original uh, sculpture itself, it's not very like detailed or anything. It does have that very blockish and geometric feel to it. Uh, so it's 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 not pinpoint accuracy, but it's close. I mean, I'd you know, it would take me a moment to recognize what it is, but uh, using those uh, head sculptures and stones to make the arms and the mouth and all has worked quite nicely, I would say. But uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, that is our little sculpture there. Interesting to see the curved shapes that we can pull off. And I've actually got these bamboo um, platforms being built mainly for the monkeys to use as climbing platforms. But my the story in my head is that this is an excavation site um, where, you know, they're they're putting up these uh, scaffolding pieces and whatnot to uh, maintain or perhaps clear out the rubble and the rock. So that's the story behind this enclosure. Uh, and while they're uh, while they're making this an excavation, for some reason, they're throwing a bunch of giant ant eaters and monkeys in there. Listen, don't touch. <laughs> uh, but I was just having some fun as I as I try to do with the video games, you know, have have fun. Um, but yeah, so I, I was hoping that, again, the monkeys would use those uh, platforms to jump around. And just to throw some inspiration out there, uh, the uh, the whole idea of Tlaloc can actually be used with uh, jaguars as well. He'd make a perfect addition to your local jaguar uh, enclosure because uh, I believe uh, jaguar sacrifices were very common to Tlaloc. So, you know, there's a nice little touch there as well. Uh, and typically, I believe his depictions involve like fangs and, and fairly aggressive features. Um, but this sculpture that I'm drawing inspiration from was, again, pretty, pretty plain. And again, like I mentioned, he's associated with, uh, you know, streams and, and things like that. A lot of, a lot of, uh, water associations um so i, I felt like uh, adding a little bit of a waterfall over here um but yeah pretty uh pretty interesting god actually i mean uh, again I, I only know so much but uh i've always found uh i've always found the religion very fascinating and tlaloc stands out as a you know typically benevolent uh but also surprisingly sometimes not so benevolent god that is, is very common among uh you know some of the uh older cultures and whatnot and and older uh tellings of uh, even newer religions. Uh, but nonetheless, you'll see, I'm, I'm just trying to build a nice little waterfall kind of thing over here using the good old fashioned um, waterfall effects pieces. Nothing new over here, but I just wanted to see how it all comes together and how nicely it, it might, may or may not uh, you know, come together. And again, just dealing with those VFX pieces. I don't perfect this right now. Um, again, I don't quite treat this like my franchise mode let's play where I just, uh, where I'm very specific about perfection this was more just to get a rough idea yeah, at the end of it you'll still be able to see the vfx sources uh, kind of sticking out of the mountain a little bit but i decided to move on because it's not the focus of uh, of today's uh, conversation uh, nor should it be I'm, I'm more interested in getting those animals in here and then finally of course going in with some of the vegetation there is of course a lot of new uh vegetation pieces for these uh for the new uh zone and whatnot so just adding a couple of those in, adding a couple of vines in here and there to make things look a bit more uh, ruined-esque. Uh, but yeah, pretty happy with how this enclosure is looking and feeling. I mean, it, we've got some good variety in texture and color and material. I mean, it's golds and, and light browns and stuff, so it's not uh, extremely uh, you know vibrant and different. But some of our later enclosures will showcase the, uh, the potential for vibrance and color in, uh, I should say, the appropriate potential for vibrance and color in some of these enclosures that you'll be building with the new pieces. So uh, uh, very excited to move on to those. But, you know, the last piece of the puzzle, of course, is to actually build our staff entrance. And again, folks, don't judge the cleanliness of uh, the terrain work and stuff. That's, again, not why I'm here, not why we're doing uh, not why we're doing this one, right? This is more for the uh, for the animals and the new pieces. God, I'm really happy with the uh, <laughs> with the fencing, actually. Again, it's just the uh, the, the head pieces duplicated, rotated, and merged together, and then one of the decorative wall elements. Uh, and then finally, we're just going to yeah, seal this off. Now, there is... I, I I can't remember if this was in the base game or not, but uh, I really like these uh, uh, dynamic mossy rock pieces. Really cool. Like, the moss is always on the top side, um, so they, they uh, you can rotate them, and, and the moss will grow appropriately. I think that's really cool. I can't I can't remember if that's in the base game. I've spent so much of my time in the tundra regions. I I, uh, I can't remember my uh, tropics and whatnot. But uh, yeah, just getting some more, you know, rocks and stuff in there, just sprucing the uh, area up a little bit because I'm getting carried away, really, if I'm completely honest with what's going on. 
Uh, but pretty soon it's going to be time to move on to our next enclosure, which I'm sure many of you are uh, are extremely excited to uh, to build for your own to, to, to get this particular animal in. Um, to take a moment and see if you can guess what the next animal is. Uh, but yeah, this is this is our enclosure for the ant eaters and the monkeys. Um, and I, I, yeah, I don't know why I decided to even begin to clean this little gap up. It's like doesn't matter, doesn't matter, party. <laughs> Just leave it. Anyways, and I also try to move that original sculpture out of the way so I don't keep uh, bothering myself by seeing it. Anyway, folks, time for the next enclosure. Now, the next enclosure, some of you might recognize. Uh, the inspiration here and uh, we're making this enclosure for the Jaguar um, which I mean I was very excited to see the Jaguar being included so I, I just assume many other people are as well uh, for the Jaguar we are building a replica if you will of a Mesoamerican ball game stadium now, if you're not familiar with the Mesoamerican ball game, I would highly suggest looking it up. It is still played somewhat actively, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it is a very interesting sport with a very, very interesting history. Um, I, I find I find the ball game fascinating. So it was, uh, you, you can find ball courts around uh, Mesoamerica. Uh, I believe there is one at uh, Chichen Itza. I always butcher that pronunciation, my apologies. Um, which is one of the largest, or if not the largest, in Mesoamerica. Um, so now, the, the Mayans were best known for the ball game. And I believe its name is uh, Pocatoc. Uh, other cultures actually played it as well. So like the Olmec, the Aztecs, they all played uh, variations of the game. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm pretty sure it is still played today uh by you know by mesoamericans um now beyond being a game historically it was also used for or rather as an alternative to war it had a very important political weight um it also had a very important sort of religious uh background to it uh the the uh sacred book of the maya has a story about these twins who played pokatuk against the gods of the underworld and so every time the theory is that every time the game was played it was this story being retold so you know this this is a very important um game as far as uh, my understanding goes it's a very important game to the culture uh but like i was saying earlier beyond religion and beyond it being entertaining to watch uh, the game had a political element to it. And part of that political element is that a lot of the time, rather than fighting wars, uh, you would play a game of Pokatok. And that would determine the victor of what would otherwise be a bloody affair. And this is something that is seen in other uh, Native American cultures in North America as well, uh, with, uh, with some of the games that are played here. But I digress. So why are we doing the Jaguars in the Mesoamerican ball court. Well, the Jaguar was a very powerful image uh, for some, if not all, I can't say I can speak for all of them, um, but uh, for some of the Mesoamerican cultures, the Jaguar was a representation of a warrior's might. And so there you can see the connection where we've got the Mesoamerican ball game, something that was used for war, the Jaguar, another symbol associated with war so we've got the jaguars in mesoamerican ball games court that's my that's my long way uh around it to uh to 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 connect it all together um but yeah it's it's not a um <laughs> it's not a small affair uh the losing team can sometimes be horribly punished in ways that i won't describe because maybe you're watching with your kids so look it up if you're curious uh, but nonetheless, that was the, uh, the inspiration for this. And it's, uh, I'm actually really happy with how this turns out, not just because of, you know, how it looks and stuff, but because of how the animals interact with it. So, uh, you'll see when we finally get to that stage, how the animals, um, play, so to speak, the ball game. Um, but yeah, these, uh, on, on either end, the little hook shape I use to, to represent the little hoop that the ball is supposed to go through. It's not a perfect hoop, but it's close enough, I would say. And you can also see some of the initial uses of some of those red pieces, that are the uh, pieces that you can edit the color of. And I do a little bit more of that now, actually, as I nudge things into 
place over here. I try to build, I believe, the barrier first, and then I go in and add some more decorative elements. I'm, again, I'm really kind of... Those of you that follow the channel and the Let's Play, you'll know already, but I really try to find inspiration wherever possible in the, uh, uh, in the culture or the history of the culture of the animal that we're putting in. So I hope you all have enjoyed the, uh, the explorations thus far. Um, because the, uh, the final enclosure is very different from the first two as far as that's concerned, but we'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, hopefully you learned a little something about, uh, the Mesoamerican ball game. It has been shown in, uh, what was it? Uh, El Dorado, if you want the most, uh, uh, what's the way to put it? Child-friendly representation of the game. I think it was in El Dorado. I'm almost certain it was Eldorado. But anyway, sorry, <laughs> again, I digress. Um, yeah, uh, and as you can see, the pieces are all there, making those uh, floor tiles and all from separate pieces as possible. There's a lot of variety of pieces, um, and uh, the structure itself looks a little repetitive, but that's because even, you know, just based on the references I was looking at to build this, there were all very kind of repetitive uh, colorations and stuff. So I do go in and obviously add my own touches wherever possible to customize it. Um, and 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 make it look a bit more, I guess, vibrant and a bit more lively, I guess. Uh, again, a lot of times color fades away with time, right? So we, I don't know if we know about the use of color over here. Um, so uh, something for me to look into, actually, I guess. Uh, but yeah, getting some uh, food enrichment down so that the animals will potentially play around the area where the um, <laughs> where the, the the hoops are, so to speak. Uh, because I feel like that would be a fun, uh, fun little piece. And here's probably one of my favorite pieces out of this uh, DLC is this very intricate looking uh, wall piece. And it actually comes in the gray that you've seen, uh, gold, which actually glows, and uh, a color editable version. And so we've got, you know, Team Red and Team Blue, of course. Can't go wrong with, uh, with Red and Blue. And uh, it looks really great. I really like just how bright it is, but we push it even further, actually. You can see me toying around with the, uh, the the gold flooring piece there. And these are the, there are three new flooring pieces. Two that are bamboo tiles, I believe, of different sizes, it looks like. And a third, which is a gold floor. Uh, which, you know, for all your uh, temple needs, I suppose. All right, onwards to the third enclosure. And I'm not going to mention what the inspiration is specifically. I'm curious to see how many of y'all recognize it. Um, because I, it's, always, it's always fun to... to uh, to see people's thoughts on uh, on where the ideas for these enclosures came from. Uh, but at its core, it is a temple slash palace in sort of that traditional sense. Um, I felt like I wanted to uh, use the pieces as one might expect them to be used as well for one of these enclosures. So we've got the first one where we built, uh, you know, intricate, intricate geometric sculpture. Uh, it's got some curved forms and things like that. It's got... Uh, you know, we've used some of the bamboo pieces and stuff, so not just the stone architectural pieces, uh, but some of the other pieces that come with the uh, the DLC as well. And then our second one, of course, is, you know, more... Uh, uh, it's, it's more structural rather than sculptural, is uh, I suppose the way I'd put it. And now this is our kind of, I, I guess I'd just describe it as a bit more of a traditional uh, approach. Uh, and mind you, when I say that, there's nothing wrong with taking a traditional approach. I just wanted to show uh, a little bit of a little bit of everything and as you know I have a strong disdain for uh, tiling textures when they're so very evident so I do try to break it up uh, and again you can see just the amount of vibrance we can get out of these color editable pieces um, really bright I love it it's very um very fitting um, for uh, for you know where we're going for obviously you can go for duller colors and stuff there's the color picker but uh, it's nice to see the uh, the way that uh, texture and stuff reflects it as well um, but yeah, nothing nothing too wild going on over here, I don't think. Um, just building a multi-layered, you know, steep-stepped temple-slash-palace sculpture, or structure, rather, sorry. So uh, I'm going to let that happen and uh, sit in silence for a moment and save my voice a little bit. And <laughs> maybe also, I should say, save your ears, right? Got to get grading at some point.
All right, so now we're working on a bit of an experiment, which, um, well, I, gu I guess we could say it quote unquote failed, but I do adjust it when we're uh, when we get the uh, the animals in. Uh, by the way, this is the enclosure for the llamas. I realize I don't think I mentioned that. I just assumed it was uh, clear already, but this is for the llamas. Um, now, I, I was wondering if the llamas would be able to climb steeper steps. If I'm not mistaken, they are typically able to uh, to take on steep steps, but may may maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but that was kind of what I was experimenting with, and uh, I was hoping to make those uh, lower areas over here. Uh, I was hoping to make them into the hard shelter spots where the llamas could maybe come in and, you know, sleep, hide from the rain if they're in a zoo where uh, where it's likely to rain. So you can see I built some tiny gaps. I think I come back to it later. Uh, yeah, there you go. I'm trying to find the, the balance, like the middle ground. Uh, something's up with the symmetry. Don't don't pay it too much attention. There we go. Just going to nudge things around. And yeah, there we go. That's uh, perfect is the word we'll use. Uh, but yeah, my hope is that the llamas will be able to get in there and uh, use that as hard shelter. Um, and of course, we got to get those golden llama sculptures in because why not? Uh, and again, you can see, again, just trying to get a variety of pieces in here so you can see what the gold actually looks like. And it is very bright. And if the if the sun catches it just right, it's, it's got that glow to it. The lens flares up. It's really quite nice. Very happy with uh, with these pieces. And as you saw earlier, I used some of these uh, pieces to make flooring out of. So there's a lot of variety there. Again, you know, the, the sky's the limit, as it were. Um, however you want to creatively utilize these pieces and now i think it's time for the uh topping on this cake yes indeed it is so building a little bit of a sculpture over here and this is where i think it'll become uh immediately evident what i was uh looking at for uh reference inspiration whatever you want to call it uh but the uh test here again is a slightly different sort of sculpture i want to see just how versatile these uh pieces are or are not and uh the answer is yeah quite a bit <laughs> Quite a bit. Uh, not so much with this, I mean, well, with this first step as well, yes, but take a look at, for example, how the blue looks, so nice and vibrant, and uh, take a look at what we're about to do right now. Uh, again, it's all, in theory, it's all the same as previous pieces uh, that we could have treated the same way to build, you know, circles out of squares and rectangles and whatnot, but it's just nice to see um, that mentality maintained with the... Uh, uh, with the game's pieces as DLC releases, you know, we don't we don't lose out on that or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I've built, you know, what I guess hypothetically are jewels into this uh, sculpture, whatever it might be. Um, I do wish, if there's something I wish for, and actually, I thought I checked, but maybe I didn't. It'd be nice if the gold pieces could have their color changed as well, because I really like the sheen on it, it's quite gorgeous. But it'd be nice to be able to switch it to metallic silver or a metallic blue or, a, you know, whatever it might be. Anyway, getting some little uh, black dots in here. Whatever could this be? I really hope the shape is recognizable. If not the what I'm what it's inspired by, hopefully that nose makes it very obvious that this is supposed to be a face. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, you know, building another sculpture out of these pieces. Um, and I, I think it works. It looks close enough. As close as I wanted to get it to the uh, inspiration that I had, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And then, of course, uh, just to cover up some of the ugliness over here, we're going to very quickly just build a little uh, block at the back over there. But you can see how these pieces can be used to build, you know, structures, build coverings for your uh, um, staff facilities and things like that. They're, they're, they are they are quite versatile, and it's it's nice to see um, that approach being maintained, and it's not like being left behind or anything. The 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 individual pieces are just <laughs> you can do so much with them. I mean, again, our fencing, I, I think I keep coming back to our fencing because it is, you, you can't really recognize the pieces unless you see it get built. It's the two heads stuck together to make a fence piece. I can't stop talking about that because it's probably my favorite part about uh, Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster before it. Just really wild to me, honestly. Anyways, folks, this is where the time lapses end in just a moment's time. We're going to add some trees and call it a time lapse, a very long one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did or if you didn't, let me know in the comments with your feedback, with your likes and whatnot. Uh, but folks, it is time after we get the staff path down over here to go back to regular speed or rather to go into regular speed for the first time and actually get the animals in here, take a look at them, see how they animate, see how they interact with the spaces we've built for them. So hope you enjoyed it. Let me know time to actually see the animals which arguably are the uh, most important part
All right, folks, how's about that for a time lapse? We got three enclosures done, each of kind of varying styles and difficulties and approaches, I think at least. Hope you like them all. Now we're going to actually get the animals in. Before we throw the animals in, though, I actually want to do a little bit of reading. Now, if you're not interested in this, as with the time lapses and everything, I have time lapse, sorry, time stamps in the description down below. So if you want to skip on by, then, you know, feel free to do that and skip through at your leisure. But basically what I want to do is I want to actually read up on the animal uh, in Zoopedia and, and just get some information, talk about the animals, uh, just from like an educational standpoint. Those of you that follow this channel know that I find that stuff very interesting. Uh, and maybe my commentary during the time lapses made that pretty evident as well. Uh, so first things first, we're going to work with this enclosure. And of course, this enclosure, as I'm sure I've already mentioned, is for our... Uh, anteater friend but not just our anteater the anteater is actually able to share its space with the Baird's tapir but we'll ignore that because that's not a part of the dlc uh, but we will get the colombian white-faced capuchin monkey uh, so we're going to get both of them in here let's take a look at the anteater first so it is vulnerable very small population in the wild just 5,000, and uh, is a medium-sized mammal that lives in the grasslands and forests of central and south america as the name suggests, the species feeds almost exclusively on ants and termites, detecting ant colonies by smell before digging a hole to feed using its long, sticky tongue. The giant anteater has a very distinctive appearance with a long, tubular snout, small eyes and ears, uh, <laughs> stocky limbs, a coarse mane, and a thick, bushy tail. They also have characteristic pattern across their bodies, white front legs, a gray muzzle, and a black strip across their chest, throat, and shoulders, with bristly, black to brown tails and manes. Giant anteater is a vulnerable species. The overall population decreased by 30% between 2000 and 2010. The habitat is under threat through deforestation and the expansion of agriculture, and they're also badly impacted by wildfires, hunting, car collisions, and dog attacks. Anteaters are protected when their captive breeding programs, sorry, when their home range falls within nature reserves, and there are also captive breeding programs in zoos, with anteaters being reintroduced to areas where they have gone locally extinct to prevent population fragmentation so kind of wild i didn't realize ant eaters were vulnerable uh, until this dlc i did not know that now as you can see their natural habitat is yes central and south america and if we take a look at uh if we take a look at the you can kind of see the habitat information over here for yourself if you're interested uh, i'm not gonna i don't want to read everything uh, I mean, hopefully that's cool. Y'all let me know for future DLC how you like me to approach it. Uh, now, in terms of social needs, giant anteaters are solitary and live alone with the exception of a mother and her young. Uh, male giant anteaters will attract fertile females by the scent of their urine, forming concert ships with receptive individuals before spending several days in each other's company to forage. The pair will likely mate several times during this period and then go their separate ways, leaving the female to be pregnant for 190 days before giving birth to a single pup. Newborns climb onto their mother's backs and are carried around by her for the first few weeks of their life. I want to see if that's actually in-game. Uh, they begin to eat ants and termites at three months old and are fully weaned by ten months. At this age, they will leave their mother and become independent, reaching sexual maturity between 2.5 and 4 years old. So you can see group size, excluding juveniles, obviously is 1 to 2. And either bachelor is also 1 to 2, whether it's male or female. Uh, neutral relation with humans and guests can enter the habitat so you know you can actually make it a pretty interactive experience um if we take a look at the research of course we're in uh we're in sandbox mode so everything's unlocked uh, and you can see some of the toys and stuff that they use scratching posts nothing new here oh the natural termite mound there we go that's the food enrichment that's unique to them so we'll pop one of those in uh and here are the uh, little fun facts uh which you can read at your leisure but let's go ahead and oh we already know about the interspecies enrichment uh, before I look at our capuchin, let's go ahead and actually get the natural termite mound in here. I realize I didn't put in the, um, uh, for some of these animals, I did not yet put in their, uh, you know, it, it was stuff to, their enrichment items and things like that. So there's the termite mound and there's the natural termite mound. Interesting. Let's get the natural termite mound in here. I feel like it'd be a nice kind of thing to have. Uh, let's pop it down over here. I'm hoping they'll be able to actually... Oh, that's not going to work. I'm hoping they'll be able to go in and drink water as well. Uh, let's perhaps put you down over here. And what we can do is we can just smooth the train out a little bit. I mean, yes, my this is not like a part of my Let's Play or anything, but I still want things to look nice, right? Uh, I think that's uh, it's always joy to be had in that. Uh, it looks like it's kind of stuck because of the pathing above. There we go. And I think the right color here would be soil. Not sand, but soil. 
I think that would... Yeah, I'd buy that. It's not exactly the right color. Soil light seems to do the trick a bit better. Um, though maybe it's actually sand, I guess. Termite sand? Oh, these really have a perfect color match. Um, but nonetheless, okay, we've got our termite mound in there. That'll be the uh, fancy feeding. We also, of course, need a regular way to eat. And if we take a look at the anteater, and how do you serve an anteater food? Ain't that a question? I guess on a food bowl. Fair enough. Let's get a large food bowl down in the middle over here. Should make for an interesting uh, viewing spot, I think. Pop you down there. And, of course, we do have the water over here, for which, you know what, I'm actually going to need to put down a um, water cleaning facility as well. Let's get that uh, water treatment happening. Let's put it down. How about over here? How about over here? Just so that when we put water into the other uh, enclosure as well, we'll have access if we if we need to. Uh, okay, so that's our ant eater. We've got food, we've got water, we've got enrichment, and of course we can take a look at toys as well. What kind of toys are they interested in? Um, we saw like dog balls and stuff, right? So I'm assuming... Where are we? There we go. Uh, yeah, large ball, plant screen, rubbing pad, forage box, feeder, scratching post. Here's about the scratching post. Let's go for, uh, let's go for that. Uh, let's go for that. Let's go for enrichment, toys, and yeah, the scratching post with an anteater. I didn't, not something I would have imagined, actually. Not something I would have imagined. Um, let's go ahead and put the scratching post down. Where? Over here? Very close to everything else. It's a very, it's actually a very tightly packed, um, very tightly packed enclosure. More tightly packed than I usually make them. Those that are watching my Let's Play know that all too well. So that's fine though. I think um, it's probably for the better. There we go. So they've got some toys to play with. Now let's take a look at our monkeys before we get our um, giant ant eaters in. So the Capuchin Monkey. Least concern. Population in wild unknown. Uh, the Colombian white-faced Capuchin Monkey is an arboreal primate that lives in the forests of Colombia, Panama, and Ecuador. There are 11 species of capuchin and even more subspecies, and the Colombian white-faced variant can be distinguished by its black body fur and distinctive white fur on the shoulders, upper chest, and around the face. Yes. <laughs> they also have a cap of black fur on the top of their head and pale pink face covered in sparse hair, as well as forward-facing brown eyes. White-faced capuchins are between 33 and 45 centimeters in length, with a 35 to 55 centimeter long tail, wow, weighing between 1.5 and 4 kilograms. Males are larger and heavier than females. Species is not endangered, but their numbers are in decline, threatened by deforestation, habitat degradation, and also hunted for bushmeat. Really? The behavior and ecology of capuchins is being studied at various research sites in Colombia, which keeps conservationists aware of the obstacles that these animals face, although this research can often be hindered by political and revolutionary upheaval in the area. Very interesting. I like that the game doesn't shy away from that kind of information. Social needs. Ah, look at the number, right? This is a social species that lives in groups called troops, comprised between 10 to 40 monkeys. All females in a group are related, and males migrate into the troop, which tends to have more females than males. All right, interesting. Reproduction. In a capuchin monkey troop, there will be a dominant male who protects the group from predators and rival troops. He's most likely to mate with females in the group, although subordinate males also mate with females. Interesting. During courtship, receptive males and females will purse their lips at each other and chase each other. <laughs> During the chase, the female may present herself to the male or he may grab her. The female will be pregnant for 160 days before giving birth to a single infant, which she will look after closely for the first four weeks of its life. When it is between one and three months old, she will share the job of caring for it with other members of the group who will assist in feeding, caring, and protecting the infant. This is known as alloparenting. Takes a, takes a village, right? At three months old, the infant moves independently and will begin playing with other young capuchins as well as bonding with the dominant male. Around this age, it will start eating solid food, becoming fully weaned between 14 and 16 months old when its mother is likely to be pregnant again. Male capuchins will leave their natal troop at four years old to search for an unrelated troop, while females remain with their natal troop for life. Males reach sexual maturity between seven to ten years old, and females at four years old, although they are unlikely to reproduce until they are approximately seven. Dominant males will leave their troop after seven years as the alpha and move to a new group to prevent inbreeding. That is so fascinating. Uh, so let's see, they're eight to forty, so you can have a lot of them. A lot of them. And like, their space requirement is you know, relatively small. I hope I've got enough room for them, though. Uh, you can see, though, they have they do have a climbing requirement as well, obviously, as you can expect. 
dominant male, promiscuous, confident, and guests can enter habitat. So if you have a capuchin and anteater enclosure, you can actually make it uh, an interactive one where, where guests can come through. Confident relation with humans is pretty great to see as well. Um, you can see all the other details down here. And as far as their toys, I see there's the small ball colorful that's being added. They, of course, can also play the musical keyboard. Suspended Forager. All right, I like that. And I don't know if anything else here is new. So let's go ahead and get ourselves that Suspended Forager. Um, if we go into our habitat, I really want to see how this looks. As you can see, I've got all the scaffolding and stuff to um, uh, to try. This is, this is suspended, or should I be attaching it upside down? Hmm. Okay, we can try to attach it upside down and see how they interact with that, if if they interact with it. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I've uh, I've tried to... Oh no, eh, this is the right way up. Yeah, suspended forager. Well, let's go ahead and put it up top over here, see if we can't bait them up there. I've tried to build the scaffolding and stuff to, like I was just saying, bait these monkeys around and see if we can't... Um, if we can't uh, get them to, to climb and, and play around with the uh, the monuments and stuff like that. And of course, there's a small, colorful ball as well, which we could maybe put... Uh, I, w I wonder how far they can go here, is the question. I, I don't know if they can actually reach everything or not. We're going to find out. Took a bit of a risk with this uh, with this enclosure, in terms of how I've uh, laid it out, but that's part of the fun, isn't it? That's part of the fun. we got to make sure the feeding platform can be reached by our staff, of course, so let's keep that low. Um, keep it next to... I don't want them to hide back there. They are confident with people, so that's good. You know what? Let's let's put it down in the middle as well. I think it makes for a good show. Whoa. That's not uh, what I was hoping for. There we go. That's better. Because uh, then, yeah, we can maybe have the anteater and the uh, monkeys feeding at the same time. That'd be a pretty nice sight, I think. And they've hopefully they'll be able to drink from the um, body of water as well. But let's... Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, bring some of them in, and, and let's take a look at them, right? So if we take a look at our uh, anteater... Uh, now hang on, I believe it's the... Uh, this is where it becomes a struggle. It's the, it's the giant anteater specifically. So let's go ahead and get our giant anteater. Where are we? There you are. And uh, I guess we could bring a male and a female in, right? Again, not really looking at... Uh, um, too many details specifically because we obviously it's sandbox mode uh the genetics and stuff we're not going to be playing this for ever or anything and everything is you know hypothetically free so just picking animals that look decent and um are the right uh, you know sex and stuff now we need the capuchin and what is the full name of the capuchin <laughs> colombian white face capuchin all right cool so back to animal trading Let's go ahead and find ourselves some Colombian white-faced capuchin monkeys. All right, Juan, let's get you in there, buddy. Let's go ahead and get uh, and say ha, sure, why not? And I just realized that um, I actually need to uh, <laughs> hire some staff. Uh, I'm just getting a, a variety here because I figure I, I want to see if they'll like run around and play and whatnot. So I'm just trying to get a bunch. Put them in there and see how active they can get. And let's get Rosa Maria as the last one. And let's get that staff that we need, shall we? Um, so all I'll really need are a couple keepers to keep up with things. And we don't need vets or anything, obviously. Let's go ahead and hit play. Get a waterfall going and all as well. And uh, yeah, these animals will hopefully be brought through. I don't tell me I need to... I don't actually need any of this stuff, don't worry. Feeding station cannot be reached. Oh, right, of course, they need to be able to refill that. <laughs> right, right, right. Let's go ahead and move that. Um, where should we put it? I don't know if we can put it down. Hmm. Let's put it down over here. Let's see if we can't uh, get them to maybe climb, if nothing else. And it's good that it's not giving me any warnings about any of the other animals' stuff. That means they can reach everything, so that's a positive. And hopefully, y'all will go and pick up these animals. Seems like uh, I needed to add an army of vets instead. I've gotten so used to my uh, my franchise mode, Let's Play, where we just um, have all the keepers able to, to transport animals and stuff as well, no issues. Uh, but that, that's all good. That's all good. Hopefully, uh, 
I'll remember to cut out my meandering trying to figure out why these guys aren't being picked up. But we've got a train of vets bringing the animals in now one at a time. Uh, I can't. I cannot wait to see how they actually interact with the space and whatnot. And then we can move on to uh, some of the other creatures that come with this DLC. All right, here we go. They're gonna get dropped off over here. Let's go ahead and see uh, see how they interact with the space. Into the sunlight. Into the sunlight, my child. Oh yes. I really hope they're able to uh, move around. Um, now, one of the things that my one of my intentions with this. Uh, is to showcase, I guess, what is and isn't possible, the limitations of some of the piece pieces and some of the animals and how they might move. Like we can see they can't get up over here. So let's go ahead and see if we can't, um, you know, fix that, I guess. Should be relatively simple if we do that. Serious injury discovered already. That was fast. That was fast. All right, let's go ahead and take a check on this again. I can climb this. Still uh, not willing to play around up here, I see. Interesting. Interesting. Look at that anteater go. Well, let's take a look here. Let's take a look at some of these animals and just appreciate them for a moment here. I guess think ticket prices are underpriced. That's okay. It's a, it should be a free zoo. Come and go as you please. Going for the water over here, looks like. No, just hanging out. There we go. What an interesting looking creature. Look at the front uh, paws as well. Such an interesting looking beast. Now this obviously is not going to have any trouble in traversing through our... Uh, our enclosure fairly uh, fairly simple it's the it's the monkeys and their adventurous nature they're climbing that I want to uh, to take a look at oh and there's the other one there's the other one so let me let's take a look here I do want a bit less rock it seems fair enough there's our injured monkey being taken away I guess let's see if I duplicate a few more of these will they be able to Maybe come up here and, and have a good time? Let's see. What are you up to? What are you up to? Just hanging out down there? Catching them doing things is going to be, uh... It's not going to be easy. Yeah, wow, they refuse to actually... walk on this for some reason. Hmm, wouldn't have expected that. Would not have expected that. Let's take a look at these monkeys for a bit. At least they've got some uh, climbing they can do. They can move around a bit. God, they're so adorable. They are absolutely adorable. Guests coming through enjoying the view. Just chilling here. Of course they're not going to do anything... I was just about to say they're not going to do anything fun while we're watching them, but uh, I guess I stand corrected. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll we'll come back to them later and see if they uh, if we can catch them interacting with anything. I, I'm really kind of surprised at their uh, unwillingness to climb up over here, um, or rather, not not to not their unwillingness to climb, but their unwillingness to um, hang out up over here. Is it because this climbing is incomplete? Doesn't look like it. Let's go ahead and nudge you over just ever so slightly. How about now? Yeah, they just don't want to be up there. Interesting. Fair enough, fair enough. It is what it is. Lesson learned. Uh, and it looks like they can get to the water as well, so that's good. And it looks like the anteaters are able to swim too. Alright, so they are swimmers. They are swimmers. And of course, they shouldn't be having any trouble getting... Um, water or anything from here. It's a little steep, which was my concern, but it looks like uh, they're able to get in pretty easily through this entry point. Monkeys shouldn't have any issue, right? Are you also pooping? Yeah, the monkeys can get in as well. Just thought I'd do another double check. Alright, very well. So that's, um, that's the new monkeys and the new anteaters. Again, we'll come back to them and, and take some more looks at them and, and hopefully catch them interacting with some of their toys or 
or uh, running around or something. Uh, I want to see them climbing at the very least. It's always nice to see uh, see the animals climb, especially the ones that are supposed to climb. They're so tiny. <laughs> so tiny. Are you going to go for a swim? No. Just hanging out at the edge over here. Both anteaters are out swimming right now. Anyway, I'm getting, uh, letting myself get too, uh, focused on the, uh, on these first two animals. Though, to be fair, they deserve a little bit more time because they are a pair together, so we want to make sure they don't get neglected. Let's try and keep an eye out for, for them climbing. Or, you know, standing on their hind legs. All right. Good enough, they're just pooping everywhere, so we'll leave them to their business. And let's take a look at the next animal. The next animal that I want to take a look at is none other than the jaguar. And I'm sure I explained the concept behind this uh, exhibit, or this enclosure rather, when I, uh, when I was doing my time lapse. So, the jaguar is near threatened. Population wild is 64,000. The jaguar is a species of big cat that lives throughout South America, Central America, and Mexico, with rare individuals with rare individual sightings in southern USA. Although they can live in multiple environment types, they prefer to be in dense forests near swamps and rivers. They're stockily built, compared to the other big cat species, weighing an average of between 56 and 96 kilograms and measuring 112 to 185 centimeters long. Yellow to orange fur with black rosette patterning and a white underside. Although the species is not endangered, their numbers are decreasing and they are near threatened. This is due to habitat loss caused by deforestation, as well as conflicts with ranchers caused by the jaguar's killing of livestock. Some demand for their pelts and their body parts also remain, the latter of which are used in traditional medicine. However, this has decreased significantly in recent decades to help conserve the natural jaguar population. Many areas in which they live have been declared protected. Very nice to hear that. Um, their natural habitat is you know, spread out through, throughout uh, Central and uh, Southern America. A nice, like, kind of face-looking thing going on over here. Um, and if we look at the species data, uh, the jaguars are solitary animals and live alone except for a mother with her cubs. Okay? When a female jaguar is in ostrus, she will range outside her territory, marking trees and vocalizing. A male will track her by scent, approaching with caution when he encounters her, as females are often very aggressive towards males, attacking them as they come near. If the male manages to get close, he will mate with her, remaining close by for two to three days afterwards and mating with her several times until she will no longer allow him to. After this, he leaves. Following the gestation of approximately three months, the mother will give birth to between one and four cubs, which begin to eat solid food at one month old and will be fully weaned at three months. The cubs will remain in a hidden den for the first six months of their lives and will then begin venturing out with their mother on hunting trips, during which she will teach them how to catch prey. Cubs stay with their mother until they are between one and two years old, at which point they will leave to establish their own territory. Females reach sexual maturity at two and males between two and three years old. So you can see they have to be kept in very small groups, one to two. Bachelor, bachelor size is just the ones, um, which, okay, is, is pretty tight. In terms of new toys, no new... Uh, no new enrichment, it looks like. And even down here, no new enrichment. Fair enough, and of course we've got our fun facts over here for you to uh, peruse, and no interspecies enrichment, so no, we can't be putting them in with llamas or anything like that, for example, so uh, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't think it. Let's take a quick peek over here, see if there's anything fun going on before we get our jaguars in. Ooh, are you climbing? No, you're, yes, yes, do it, do it, no, no, up, yes, up, go, yes. Lots of hesitation here. Lots of hesitation. He's just hanging out. No intent on going any higher. Wow, what a tease. Alright, fair enough. Fair enough. You win this time. Because I believe they can go all the way up. Yep, they can. Just opting not to. Just opting not to. Very well. Um, Alright, so with that done... Actually, one last thing I want to check. I want to see if this is, like, a, a fine amount of space or not. I'm not very happy with the plants they have. They need a lot more coverage, eh? They need a lot more coverage. Everything else is fine. They also need a lot... A much larger population. But uh, if we give them some more coverage, they will be satisfied. So let's just quickly... 
some more trees in there, shall we? It is quite unfortunate that they're not willing to walk on the, um, on that, on those surfaces, but, uh, that's yeah, fine. Not the end of the world. All right, back to the Jaguars. My apologies. Back to the Jaguars. So, animal trading. Let's take a look at the Jag. Where are we? Hi, J for Jaguar. All right. Wow. Some really, uh, you know, quote unquote expensive options here. Let's go ahead and adopt you. Pop you into habitat number two. And let's see. We've got that's the female. Let's get our male as well. Adopt you and pull you in here. Um, I'm really hoping they are able to move around this space. I imagine they're able to jump a few jumps. I imagine they'll be fine with that. Let's seal that off real quick. Um, I, I hope they'll be able to, you know, kind of get over this and, and, and play around over here. I've got their enrichment items and stuff to uh, try and pull them towards the uh, goalposts, as it were. And, of course, they're able to rest in here. And guests are able to see them resting and eating while they'll be drinking um, up over here. So, you know, if you're over here... You might have a view of them drinking, depending on how large they get, right? So, uh, let's, let's see. Looks like the first box is coming through. I'm really excited for the Jaguar. Really excited for the Jaguar. Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, watch, it turns out they can't actually get anywhere. They're stuck up here. I wouldn't be surprised. Alright. There you are, baby. Oh, look at that. Injured? Why, why are you coming in injured? Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Look at those ear wiggles. What else do you expect of a cat other than taking a rest right away? Oh, there we go. Beautiful. You're coming down. Is that the only way you can get down there? Seems to be. Alright, so I'm glad I did that. Oh, they're able to escape. Wow, they can actually... Oh, yes, of course. They can get up from there. Of course they can. Well, that's an easy fix. That's a... Uh, easy fix. Temporary solutions. Okay, they're able to get back up over here with a little jump. Good, good, good. Play that ball game. What do we got? A serious injury discovered vet called. Animal is thirsty. Okay, it seems like the uh, monkeys are not able to drink from this. So let's go ahead and get them a way to drink. Water pipe, I suppose. Alright, they should be fine then. Don't want an animal dying during this showcase. That would be horrible. Wow! Did you see that? <laughs> that, was, uh, that was quite the jump there. That was quite the leap. Glad I caught that. Glad I caught that. Let's, let's take a look at you in the sun here, shall we? Oh man. Beautiful. Hear that purring. Yeah, you're eyeing that goalpost, aren't you? Go for it. Go for it. Really love those architectural pieces as well that you're seeing at the back. That, look at that. Look at that. I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh no. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay, they can jump. They can jump. I should have checked again. I did not think that was going to be possible. Wow. Well, hey, that's that's good to know. This is, again, this is kind of like the uh, intent of my showcase is for us to all see what the um, what we should be wary of. Uh, for those of us that, uh, you know, like, like learning by seeing as opposed to um, by reading. I'm one of those types. I like to see. And, uh, and, uh, and learn from, from what I see. There we go. Let's go ahead and make that out of concrete. Please and thank you. Obstructed. Where? Where are you obstructed? There we go. Can't move it down for some reason. Let's see if we can't, uh, adjust you over to here. There we go. That ought to do the trick. Definitely glad we saw that. Definitely glad I was here for that before some guests got mauled. That would have been uh, interesting. Not good for the ratings, I think. Not good for the ratings. Okay, being brought back. Where's our other one? I just hanging out in here? No, you're out as well. You're out somewhere. 
like to catch them playing or something, you know? Now the question is, can they actually get even higher? I should check the habitat again. So you're fine now, you're locked in, that's good. They can get up and down, they can jump up and down as well, so that's good. No problems there. Yeah, to get up here they have to jump. To get up here they have to, well they can walk up there actually. So that's good. I want to make sure the animals are actually, you know, at, made active. They're both in here now, aren't they? Yep. That was no mating dance or anything, no, unfortunately. The purring, it's so powerful. Away you go. Let's come to a sudden stop. There's the leap. Good stuff. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You guys are about to mate. I want to see, like, the new animations and stuff, right? Ah. I think we missed it. That's unfortunate. Too busy looking at one animal. Missed out on the other. Alright. Crowds are coming through, that's good. <laughs> that jump is always interesting to look at. It's a tough thing to animate, too, because... You basically have a start point and an end point. Making the animation smooth is tough. This is actually really cool. They're they're really jumpy. They're really leapy, aren't they? They like to move around. They're they're enjoying this, I think. Definitely happy with the um the theme I went for with them. Gonna play? No? Come on now. Go for it. No one's watching. No one's judging. Ah, oh. <laughs> no such luck. All right, I think enough time has been spent on the uh, the Jaguars. We'll come back to them and see if they're uh, having a good time afterwards. Now, we could take a look actually at their... Uh, see, they need some more tree coverage. Happy with the terrain. Not enough climbing. They need more climbing. I guess this stuff doesn't count as climbing, eh? Uh, very well. Well, we can take a look at uh, perhaps building some... Uh, building some uh, climbing surfaces for them. Easy enough, you know, you put some logs down or something, it can match the theme pretty easily. Uh, so let's go ahead and, sure, put you down there, and you up there. Get ourselves, I don't think I'm going to spend uh, all that much time editing these uh, these enclosures. That's not really my intent here. More just to see and learn for when I put them into my, um, into my actual uh, franchise mode. Let's play Zoos. Learn what their uh, needs and wants and limits are. Let's see. Add a little bit. Interesting. What if I what if I just tuck this down here? And then do this sort of a thing. I just want to see if that uh No, okay. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Well, alright, that's uh, cool to know, because then what you can do is you can kind of, like, build more intricate climbing platforms, and I guess they, they will use it because they want to. Unlike those monkeys, apparently. <laughs> We're just there to tease. Now, this would give them access to up there, which is a scary prospect, obviously. Uh, we could also try and, you know, bait them up uh, over here. Maybe have them walk along this line. That would be really interesting, I think, to be able to see uh, to see them that close. Nonetheless, I think uh, I think we get the point here of uh, of just how much climbing they need. Yikes! About to have offspring. Oh, we get to see a baby capuchin. We'll get to see a baby capuchin. Come on, where's your baby? I can't wait. Offspring imminent. Any second now. Sitting down to give birth, I think. Oh boy. Where, where, where? Are you the baby? Oh my god, you're the baby. You're like the same size. <laughs> Looks exactly the same. Fair enough. Fair enough. Have we got any climbers yet? Any takers on these uh, climbing platforms that I so lovingly put down for them? 
No such luck. No such luck. Very well. All right. One last uh, look at the Jags here. They also need more uh, coverage as well, like tree coverage. And I'm sure you know, we could put some trees down here and there. We, the one thing to be careful about, though, is uh, their ability to climb the trees, obviously. They will use them to make a great escape, I suspect. Let's see if like a handful of trees here do the trick. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they come from very des dense, like, forested areas, right? So I shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, they need a lot of coverage. Though this is enough to make them happy enough, right? Nothing's in the red, basically. Oh, yeah, look at that. Guests are... Nice to see the guests actually come through. Now, really quickly, before we move on to the final animal, I want to look at one more thing here. Where is our baby capuchin? Oops, sorry. Uh, offspring... Well, I want to see your actual offspring. Where's our baby? Where's our gate? There it is. So the reason why I want to look at the baby is because... Yeah, it's marked separately as a juvenile. Excellent. Pablo. Habitat item capacity. Oh, very nice. All these little details. All right, let's take a look at you. Take a look at you. Let's take a look at your stud book here. We can see your parents. We can see your genealogy. Oh, wow. That's... Gonna get really interesting. That's gonna get really interesting to look at. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm. I'm. This. That's not. I'm not gonna dig into that today. But it's cool to kind of see that in action. I. I. I can't help myself. Uh, that's not part of the DLC. That's part of the free update. But like I said, I can't help myself. Anyway, on to the final animal. Uh, there is, of course, the exhibit animal as well, the new frog, but uh, I'm I'm focusing more on the uh, enclosures. So let's go ahead and get ourselves the llamas, right? Deified as they are in this beautiful uh, sculpture. Let's take a look at them first in the Zoopedia over here. Llama. Anytime I think about the llama, I think about uh, the Animaniacs joke about the, the Dalai Lama. All right, the llama. Llama glama. They are... They are glamorous beasts. Uh, the llama is a species of camelid native to the mountains and steppes of Western Southern America, or Western South America, sorry. Naturally found in Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina, llamas have since been introduced all over the world as livestock because of the high quality wool they produce. They are domesticated animals and have lived alongside humans as livestock and pack animals for 4,000 years. They have a long neck, long legs, and a stocky body covered in thick, shaggy wool and they can be white, tan, piebald, black, or gray in color. Both sexes are between 5.3 and 5.9 feet tall, and 37 inches to 64 inches long, weighing between 286 pounds and 440 pounds. Hang on, why, was it, why were some of them in kilograms and centimeters and meters, and this is now pounds and feet and inches? <laughs> Llamas are domesticated and thus are an abundant and well-regulated species, which does not have conservation needs. They're generally good-natured animals, curious and easy to train because of their extensive interaction with humans. They are domesticated, lots of them in the wild. You know how you can tell the difference between a llama and an alpaca? An alpaca can pack a punch. Hey, that is not accurate, by the way. I actually don't know how you tell them apart. I'm sure there's something obvious in their shape, um, but I've never been able to spot it. Uh, so they're, as you can see, you know, mainly focused or only in South America, none in Central America. And if we take a look at the species data, llamas are... Oh, 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 sorry, I want to see this. Oh, that's adorable. Is that it? Just a little bite? I mean, I'm not judging. You do you. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Cute. Cute. Sorry, back, back to the llamas. I was expecting a more... Um, Intricate animation. I think we might have missed the uh, the first bit of it. Are you playing? Oh, I thought they were maybe playing with the anteaters. Oh, they're about to mate. Okay, that's exactly what I was expecting. I was like, you know, I get the feeling. Oh, this is how they mate. Little nose touches. I think that's it. Yep. That's their mating animation done. And hang on now, we're, we're gonna get a baby jaguar? I missed the jaguar's mating. 
offspring due August of year three. So we're going to at least stick around until August of, uh, of this year. Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, lots of action going on, folks. Let's go ahead back to Zoopedia. All right. Social needs of the llamas. Llamas are social animals that live in mixed herds. Males often form very close bonds, and members of a llama group have a constantly changing social rank based on small fights within the herd. These consist of spitting, ramming, neck wrestling, and kicking. Yikes. Wild. Um, reproduction. Males who want to mate will chase females, and if one is receptive, she will then lie down on the ground to allow him to mate with her. Llamas are induced ovulators, which means that mating causes an egg to be released. Ah, due to this, females will often get pregnant after the first mating event. She will be pregnant for 11 and a half months and then give birth to a single cria, which will begin eating solid food at two weeks old and is fully weaned by six to 10 months. Females reach sexual maturity at one year old, while males reach sexual maturity at three years old. Cool. As you can see, they can have a massive, massive uh, herd. So that's cool. Dominant social hierarchy is Constantly in flux based on small fights. Okay, very cool. Guests cannot enter the habitat. That's the one that I wasn't sure about. I knew the jaguars, obviously guests can enter, but I wasn't sure about the llamas. Uh, if we take a look at the research here, mm, nothing new up here. Uh, nothing nothing too new uh, down here. And of course, no interspecies enrichment. More mating. Come on, me. Is it? I, I guess it is really that short, which is why we missed it the first time. Uh, and keeping an eye out for August as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get ourselves some llamas. Whoops, sorry. Um, not looking at the jaguar anymore. Llama, 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 llama. There we go. All right. Go ahead and get ourselves. I mean, as we've seen, we can do quite a big group. So let's just get a bunch of them. Well, let's keep it to. Let's get three, right? Because I didn't make this for a large group. I made this for a small group, which, uh, granted, might not... 2 to 30, so they'll still be alright. It can be big. It doesn't have to be big. It's not like the, uh, the monkeys where it's, like, 8 to... Uh, like, if we take a look here, the capuchin is... Yeah, 8 to 40, so you need a minimum of 8 there. What are our jaguars up to? I haven't caught them climbing or anything just quite yet. Guess they're all chilling in here. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. <laughs> it is pretty cool to see how much they jump around and move. I always worry about animals that are too um, stagnant. Like they don't move around enough. They don't interact with the space enough. All right, here come our llamas. Here come our llamas. I'm also actually really happy with this uh, use of the uh, the heads. There's two heads sewn together. It kind of looks like uh, thighs, legs, and this lower half. Oh, what a cutie. They're so adorable. All right, separate. Move. Let's take a look. Happy issue of the terrain. Could use some more short grass. They always can use more short grass. Are you actually able to sneak under this thing? I feel like they can escape. No, they can't. Okay, good. Good, good, good. They're not able to climb these steps or anything. Fair enough. So they're not going to have enough hard shelter, obviously. Coverage is good, though they're not the biggest fan of the uh, Brazil nut tree. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and make sure they have some of their items, right? So the llama requires what? For bedding, they could use these leaves. Go ahead and get you some of these. It's nice to have that added in. In terms of their enrichment, I always love seeing them play with the grab ball. Got the rubbing pillar as an option as well. Go ahead and get you some food enrichment too. This is always fun. Put this down over here. And of course, our regular food and water. Ooh. That's different, I believe. Pop you down there. Now let's take a look and see. Um, yeah, just enough space for, for three of them over here. That's good. They don't need too much space. Look at the crowds. They're just as excited as we are for the new animals. Are you going to climb? Nah. Fair enough. Back to the llamas over here. Let's take a look at them a little bit. Didn't really give them much uh, attention. They're so cute. Yeah, do they just eat grass? 
they're so funny looking when they run too. Like when they start running. It's like they generate momentum from their necks. That was about to have offspring. Alright, let's keep an eye on this. Any second now. Let's see what a jaguar cub looks like. Oh yeah, I don't know if you're supposed to be doing that when you're uh, about to have a baby. Look at that! Look at that animation! It's so nice! So, it's got so much intensity. So happy I'm here for this. Another one? Another go? Maybe? Alright, so this kind of worked out. Nice. Yeah, I'd, I'd say this worked out as, as intended, so that's nice to see. Definitely had a few issues with this one, but uh, overall, from a from a visual perspective of like what they're doing and how they're behaving, that's good. Where is our Where's our baby? Offspring imminent still. <laughs> Did a really bad job there. It's, we're well past the uh, the due date now. It's supposed to be last month. Oh, oh, okay. I was like, oh no, what happened? It's the food. Offspring imminent still. I don't know if you can have a baby while eating. I can definitely watch you eat, though. animal. Oh, there it is again. Yeah, still no baby. Alright, fine. Back to the llamas. Such a tease. Oh, oh, or are you gonna climb? I wanna see as much as we can, you know? I wanna explore the animals as much as possible. Now where? Down. Cool. Post-meal drink, fair enough. Can't blame you. Alright. I don't think we need to watch them drinking. I think we all know how cats look when they're drinking, but for those of you that are curious. Lying down for the baby? Usually they either lie down or sit down when they're about to have a baby. Come on. No. Oh, yes. Knew it. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Oh, there it is. Pop up behind me like that. Oh, is that a pair of babies? It's a pair of babies. Keep her eyes on them a little bit. Mommy looks tired back there. Now I do wonder if the babies are as active. Like, are they going to be running around as much? Are they going to be jumping as much? Are they going to be... Trying to escape as much. Oh, look at that yawn. <laughs> the yawn and stretch. Right. Tupac. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. R.I.P. Um, Alright, looks like they have a similar reach. No, no sneaky gaps or anything. Though they are willing to walk along this. Interesting. See, so the jaguars are willing to walk along these structures. But the monkeys seem not to be. Fair enough. You up to something? You never know when they're gonna like start playing or or do something goofy. Anyway, back back to the llamas. Back to the llamas. Habitat cleanliness. I've got a bunch of keepers. be seeing these problems. Keepers coming in every month, supposedly. Yeah, they're just being kept busy. I'm actually surprised they can't escape from this. If they just duck and they just lower their necks, they should be able to slide right through. But, uh, I guess not. Taking a seat. Oh, so cute. Looks like their coloration is pretty much the same. I was wondering if they'd have slightly different coloration or or not. 
They have such curious faces as well. Like, like they look like they're curious animals. Like, look at this one. He's just like, ah, oh, yes, yes. Hmm, yes, this monument. Now, yes, stairs that I cannot use. I was hoping they'd be able to go up the steep stairs. Um, but no, I, I guess they have to kind of lower the stairs and make it more, uh, you know, plausible. I mean, I, let, let's, let's experiment a little bit and see what it would take to make these stairs accessible. Because then you can kind of actually make, um, hard shelter like this where they can tuck into temples and whatnot. I guess the steps shouldn't be that steep, right? Let's try, let's try that. I want to see if we can't get uh, baby uh, llamas before we call it a call it a day here. Move you down. Don't care about the guests. Okay, let's see if they can't get up there. Wow, they they poop a lot. I think it's recalculating. No, traversable area, there we go. Okay, so you can get up there now. I get rid of this. What are we looking at? There's the keeper. So the keepers are coming through. Come on. You're able to get up there, you're not able to get in. It might just be that it's uh too wide of an area. Like no sorry, not wide enough. The animal might be too wide to get in through this small gap over here. Let's see. How about that adjustment? Yeah, I feel like that's the issue. What if I get rid of some more of these? Doesn't really make that much of a difference, unfortunately, but I want to see it. Oh, you want to catch them eating as well. Still stuck there. All right, we'll take a look at that in a bit. Drinking, rather, not eating. <laughs> it's teeth. So yeah, they can climb up this. Uh, I wonder if this bump is just too high. Go ahead and set you up a little bit. Ooh, about to mate. Seems they did the whole rub each other's necks thing. Nothing too wild. Yeah, I can't get in here. Oh, probably because of that gap. That might be it, party. That might be it. Alright, how about now? Owner truth. Last time I'm checking. Yes, there we go. So now they can get in there. Question is, will they? Will they want to? Will they want to rest there? This is obviously, you know, not the accurate look or anything like that, but uh, good to know that they can climb, just they can't climb too steeply. Fair enough. Shouldn't be surprised. Go on. Go on, then. Go on, then. Oh, you know you want to. There we go. There we go. <laughs> That's it, I take it? Alright, fair enough. Now, do we have offspring imminent here? Yes, January of year five. Very well. Well, hang on. Yeah, see, they could... I'm, I'd be terrified they'd come charging out at me, but I guess they don't have enough space to, to get through. Giant anteater's about to have offspring. Great, we're going to be able to see everyone's babies. That makes me so very happy. You're about to have offspring. I'm not going to watch. I feel like it's like watching a kettle, right? Won't boil. Very minimal climbing. I, I would really expect to see more climbing happening every time I kind of came through. But uh, no such luck. We saw a little bit of climbing. Add your offspring. Oh, there's our baby giant anteater. Take a look at you. Oh, so tiny. Oh, so small. Look at the little tongue. Really kind of goofy looking, aren't they? Is 
They are very goofy looking, that's for sure. I'd like to see them play together as well, like the uh, the monkeys and the anteaters. Look at that pace, jeez. I'm I I'm very surprised about the uh, the anteaters. I just didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> Don't know how else to put it. I just didn't know. All right, give me my baby llama. I guess we gotta wait until next year for that. And how are our jaguars doing? Well, you're jumping around. Got our two babies over here. Maybe going on an adventure, perhaps together. Perhaps. Come on. Gearing up to climb. Yes, no, maybe so. No. Oh, yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Nice. Very clean. I want to see if uh, they'll go up on this ridge. Or if they're just going to climb down. Oh, just climbing down. <laughs> Don't want to be up there with your sibling. That was good. Nice clean animation. That's so- they look like they're attached to the hip. That's adorable that they're chasing after each other. Or while well, one's chasing after the other. Up goes... Oh, okay. Bit of a backflip there. And this seems to be their preferred way of getting back up over here now. It's based on what I've seen. What little I've seen. Doesn't say that our staff can't reach it. So we should be fine. Taking a little nap. Alright. I think I could speed time up a little bit maybe so we can get our baby llama. Do really want to catch. Those monkeys. Having fun. They really seem to be very grounded. Let's see here, they've got more than enough climbing, like, opportunity, yeah. Could, if I wanted to, go in and just add some more soil for them or something. Bother me that they're not really happy. Gotta get rid of some of the rock as well. Go. Almost. Okay, now there's just too much rock. There's some of the rock up over here is bothering them. There it is. This was bothering me. I don't know why specifically with the uh, with the monkeys. Also want to see if uh, oh. Of course you stop when I'm watching. No, no, yeah, there we go. Give chase. Give chase to the ball. And it's stuck. Ball's back. Alright. I do want to see if the anteaters eat from the, uh... The hill. Oh. <laughs> that was adorable. Very rolly ball. And of course it'll end up in the same spot because that's how physics works. So, move you to a better spot here. There we go. Good luck with the anteaters, not quite yet. Has this thing been been filled even? No. Got it filled up. That means it's been used. And our llama should be coming soon. January of year five. So not too much. Not too much to go. Let's see. Let's speed it up a little bit. Would like to see the baby llama. And I want to see if we can't catch the uh, anteater eating as well. From the enrichment item, I mean. That's what an anteater sleeps like. Curled up into a little ball. Oh, that's adorable. I very, very readily find animals adorable, though, so that's, you know, maybe just me. Okay, there we go. This is being filled in. Just gonna dump them in there. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Digging and, uh, 
Yeah, getting their tongue in there. Look at that, climbing onto the model and everything. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm definitely glad we uh, hung around for that. Very neat. Very neat. All right. Pick up the speed again. Get me to my baby llamas. You taking a nap? <sighs> Just completely passed out. Oh, that's really cute. Having their little dreams. Up the speed a little bit more. Maybe I'll just, uh, oh, this is going rancid, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's set you up over here. Let's go ahead and get some mechanics before we have something break. There we go. I want to see if that can't be reached. That needs to be fixed. I was worried about that. All right, what's going on over here? Playing with your grab ball. Not so much anymore. Almost time for the baby. Almost time for the baby. Not those babies. What's going on over here? Any luck with the monkeys? Oh, maybe. Nope. Saw me looking. <laughs> saw me looking. Felt me looking. Alright, very well. Last order of business is this baby llama, and then we can call it a session, folks. I mean, I, again, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, the overall look and the experimentation with some of the pieces. I wanted to see the pieces in action. I wanted to see what we could do with them, you know, which ones can shift colors, how they line up, how they play with each other, how they work. Uh, I wanted to see how they could be mixed and, you know, matched to do some weird things every once in a while. Uh, and, of course, I wanted to see the animals get put in as well and uh, just see how they animate, how they move, and, and what there is to learn about them. I always find the Zoopedia a fascinating thing, just like the, the idea of it. I mentioned it countless times before. I love games that uh, kind of teach you uh, things. So um, I'm uh, that was kind of my focus here. And I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, like I said, let me know down below. If you didn't, let me know down below as well, because I'd love to you know, make it a better experience the next time we uh, we see some new DLC coming out. I, I want to see uh, I want to know what you all want to see and how you all want to see it uh, so I can, uh, you know, approach it accordingly. There's our baby llama. Oh. Oh, so cute. Oh, so very tiny. Okay, now can you sneak out, actually? You also can't sneak out. Almost. Oh, you know what? You can sneak out. Look at that. Could have a runaway llama on our hands. Llama on the lamb. There. I don't know why it's that one specifically. The gap must be bigger, but... Right, we've waited this long. Let's take a moment, shall we? Oh, it's such a tiny face. <laughs> I'll stand there. It's a risky spot to stand in. It really does look like they're just eating the grass, doesn't it? Don't walk through your child. Yeah, they look very derpy. That's the only way to put it. They're such derps. Adorable, but also very derpy. Alright, folks. <laughs> the baby llama wants to, to call it a session as well, so I think we're going to call it a session here, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It's very different from any Planet Zoo coverage we've done on the channel before, so your feedback, as always, will make a massive difference in how I approach things in the future, like I said countless times while we were waiting for, uh, you know, animals to have babies and things like that. I'm really uh, excited to see how these animals are, uh, you know, how they're re uh, received in the... Uh, uh, franchise modes and things like that. I'm really interested to see how far uh, some of the you know climbing structures and stuff can be pushed as well. That's the only thing that I was really surprised by is that the uh, the monkeys are not willing to climb up and actually use these platforms. Um, I'd expect them to be cool with that, but you know I guess not. So that's that's a bit of a surprise. Uh, but the um, the jaguars are definitely a lot of fun. The way they kind of leap around. I'm also glad to see uh, the llamas looking absolutely adorable. Um, no no surprises. They're working as expected. 
I would say. And the uh, that little uh, termite mound is definitely a very nice addition. I really like the animation stuff that comes with it. Now, don't take this to be like a review of any sorts or anything. It's just my uh, very quick opinion, not my you know, be all end all have not spent enough time with this DLC to make a uh, conclusive review or anything like that. Uh, again, hope you all enjoyed. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers. <laughs>